Okay, so today we're going to talk about Aria's top seven chapters. Now, I always love an Aria chapter, and I feel like it's because she travels a lot, so we get to see a lot, and also her progression is great. We see all of the things that she learns along the way in her efforts to survive. Now, the first thing I noticed when looking at Aria's chapters is that they build up over the first few books, and then almost seem to completely drop off. Now, I do get that in the later books, we have more character POVs, so I guess it's it averages out as fewer chapters per character, but yeah, it's definitely lacking for Arya. Adds to a bit of mystery, so I hope we get a bit more in Winds of Winter from her. A bit more travelling. Anyway, we get five chapters in A Game of Thrones when she's travelling with her family down to King's Landing and it's all kicking off. Arya gets 10 chapters in A Clash of Kings as we see her begin to head back north with Yorin, you know, bound for the Night's Watch. And then she gets captured by the Mountain and his men who are, of course, too stupid to realise that she is the Lady Arya of House Stark. Um, and then she ends up at Harrenhal and serves under Rhys Bolton before managing to escape with the help of Jack and Hagar. In A Storm of Swords, though, she gets... 13 chapters. Now, unfortunately, she's still a captive for most of this. She gets captured by the Brotherhood Without Banners, and at least it's a lot more amicable than it was before with her other captors. She recognises her father's man, Harwin, and she's still with Gendry and Hot Pie. She eventually escapes them and immediately gets snapped up by the Hound. He is going to take her to the twins and, you know, get that money for her. But that's all gone to shit. They're on the road for a while and he gets in a bad fight. She ditches him and makes her way to Bravos. A Feast of Crows, though, is where it seems to totally drop off and she only gets three chapters. We see her begin her training at the House of Black and White, poses Cat of the Canals, killing Darian and getting punished by being made blind afterwards. In A Dance with Dragons, we get a measly two chapters. We see her getting her sight back and going off on her first official assassination contract, which is the insurance broker. And then at the end of it, she gets sent off to Isambaro at the Playhouse, which we then pick up on in the sample chapter for The Winds of Winter called Mercy. Shameless plug, I have done a reading for that, so you can go and find that on my channel as well. Now, I'm going to take you through Arya's top seven chapters, and why seven, you might ask? Well, we've got seven books planned for the series. There's seven kingdoms, most of them follow the faith of the seven, and I just like the number seven. So, at number seven, A Storm of Swords, Arya 3. She has a lot of good chapters while she's travelling through the Riverlands with her various companions, but this is during the time that she is captured by the Brotherhood Without Banners, and they manage to get hold of Sandor Kagan, who is brought forth in front of Lord Beric and Thoros and made to answer for his crimes. He argues that he's a knight, although he did these things under maybe Lannister orders, he is no better or worse than the rest of them, you know, any other knight. Arya steps forward and she's like, You murdered my cut, you know. You killed him. He's, you butchered the butcher's boy. And so he's made to answer for his crimes by trial by battle. Lord Beric lights his sword aflame during battles and melees, things like that. And so Sandor is coming face to face with his biggest fear. He has this burn down the side of his face. Of course, fire is something that he's like, I'm out. That's what he was like at the Blackwater. The fight scene is intense, and the Hound eventually wins, but he is on fire and he's whimpering. He's got flesh sloughing. It looks like it could be sloughing when it's written. I think it's called sloughing. I should have Googled it before I started recording. Um, oh well. Anyway, he's got flesh like sliding off of his arms, and Arya's still there like trying to stab him and screaming like, you go to hell, and Beric has supposedly been downed by the hounds, but he gets up and he's like, oh, he's already there. Like, damn right he's already there. 
he's not friends with fire and not like Thoros and Barrick. But yeah, it is a brilliant, brilliant chapter. And it's got to be up there, hasn't it? In one of the top. So I'm putting it at number seven. At number six, A Game of Thrones, Aria 3. She is currently being trained by Sirio Pharrell and he's got her out catching cats in the Red Keep. She bumps into Tommen and Marcella, the prince and princess, and they don't even recognise that it's Arya, the Hand's daughter. They call her a dirty, ragged, smelly boy. And yeah, Arya just freaks out and runs off. But for one, it's not a bad thing that she's easily disguised as a boy. Yorin does grab her hair later on and, you know, cuts it off to disguise her as a boy. He calls her boy to, like, get the hint. Side note, could you imagine if that was Sansa? Like, oh no, my hair, it's ruined! Um, but yeah, disguises, plus. The capturing the cats is like, she captures the pigeons later on, so that's a skill, skill learn. And uh, yeah, so she goes running off. She goes down a secret passageway, and it's in the darkness, but she can feel these dragon skulls. And it just confirms the story that Robert had taken the Targaryen dragon skulls that were in the throne room and hid them away somewhere. But she travels along and she overhears some men talking about killing her father. So that's intense. It's a good chapter overall. I really, I like it. At number five, A Clash of Kings, Arya 10. This is Arya's escape from Harrenhal. It is tense as fuck but we get to see a lot of Harrenhal and she's serving under Bruce Bolton as his cupbearer he is terrifying he's got these icy cold eyes and he's always getting leeched left right and center he's not a guy to mess with when he's in town the pikes never lack for heads and he's got the women that were you know laying with the Lannister soldiers, they're now being punished. I mean, they would have been dead if they had refused the Lannister soldiers, and now they're being punished. This guy, Arya, she goes to get him some water, and she has a funny little interaction with Elmar Frey, who is actually her betrothed. He's banging on about, oh, I'm supposed to marry this princess, and she's like, screw your stupid princess. But it's Arya. Catelyn had negotiated the crossing of the twins with a whole bunch of betrothals, and one of them was Arya and Elmar Frey. And since Rob was king in the north, Arya's technically a princess, and she's like, fuck her stupid princess. So, yeah. Arya takes a pail of water back to Roose Bolton. He's holding a war meeting around his little leechy bed, and she hears that Winterfell has fallen. Later on, she's cleaning his room and she finds a map of the Trident. This is useful. Her, Gendry and Hot Pie meet to escape Harrenhal and Arya shows herself to be a fast learner. Tricking the guard by saying she's been sent to give him some silver, she accidentally drops it and then cuts his throat. Um, This is a scrawny little badass and yeah, they... they get out of Harrenhal. It's moody, it's tense, it's Harrenhal. At number four, A Clash of Kings, Aria 9. This is the chapter prior to the one I've just put at number five, because it's still an awesome chapter. She's still at Harrenhal, and everyone's got their little jobs. Gendry is at the Smith, Hot Pie is baking, and Aria is serving the under-steward. Now, She's already used two of her three death wishes, so she's got a big decision to make. But Arya's noticed a hundred Northmen coming in, and they're being held prisoner. Arya wants to free them. She needs Jack and Agar's help, and she's only got the one name left. She blackmails him a little bit. We also get some interesting thoughts from her in this one about Jack and Hagar. She had been avoiding the Larathi since Weiss's death. Chiswick had been easy. Anyone could push a man off a wall. But Weiss had raised that ugly spotted dog from a pup, and only some dark magic could have turned the animal against him. Yorin found Jack in a black cell, 
The same as Roger and Vita, she remembered. Jacken did something horrible, and Yoren knew. That's why he kept him in chains. If the Lorathi was a wizard, Roger and Vita could be demons he called up from some hell. Not men at all. We also get Vargo Ho in this chapter, and I know he's got the lisp, and I just, I like seeing him when he props up, because I think that the lisp is so well captured in text form. Uh, I'm not going to read it out, because I don't know if that's offensive, but I enjoy reading it. Is that bad? I don't know. She finds her way to the godswood at Harren Hall, and she prays to the old gods, and bumps into Jack and Hagar there, and he's like, don't mock the gods, you only have one name left. And she's like, but I need help getting these Northmen out. She's upset by this and names him as the final one. He sends her off to get some broth and follows on with Roger and Vita down to where the Northmen are kept. They fling the boiling hot broth all over the guardsmen and set to cutting throats. Side note, what is up with Vita, right? Vita sat on top of one of the dead men holding a limp hand as he gnawed at the fingers, bones cracked between his teeth. It's like, you know, when Brienne describes him chewing on her face. Oh. Arya unnamed Strachan anyway, because he's basically been blackmailed into helping her, and she still has the cheek to ask Jacken, like, so do I have a third name still? And he's like, there's your three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like, He's like, I am dead now. Uh, he changes his fucking face in front of her and gives her the coin. They have a little chat about where he's from, teaches her the phrase Valar Mogulis, and then she gets eye to eye with Rhys Bolton and becomes his cupbearer. A terrifying prospect. But yeah, it's a lot of action in this chapter. A great bit of mystery around Jack and Agar and his companions. We see the God's Wood and a lot just a lot of Harren hole. At number three, A Dance with Dragons, Aria 1. The chapter is called The Blind Girl, and we kick it off with her dreaming as Nymeria. She is having a warg dream, and she's feasting on the flesh of man, which is something that we've already been told at the beginning of this book by Varamir is one of the warg law big no-nos. So she gets out of bed and she's feeling her way around the room and we start to learn how she is adapted to being blind. She does a sniff test on her clothes and she knows the stitching on the socks so she can tell which colour it is on which foot. She knows what the cooking smells like rather than seeing it and knows when it's the kindly man visiting her from his smell. And what she knows of him, she knows people by their footsteps and the heat from candles and the different shapes of coins. It's all pretty impressive. This is really intensifying her other senses. You have five senses, the kindly man said. Learn to use the other four. You will have fewer cuts and scrapes and scabs. The kindly man questions her on what she's learned, and one of the things she knows is that it's begun snowing in the Riverlands. But she can't tell him that because how is she going to, you know, how does she know it? She only knows it through the warp dream. So yeah, she keeps that to herself. We learn about her routines of training. So potions and poisons are in the afternoons. Supper is language, and in the evening, she plays the lion game with the waif. She has a stick to feel her way around, and the waif basically beats her with it, a similar concept to what we see in the show, but less extreme. She remembers John and the home, and people like Beth Cassell, because she names herself Blind Beth. Thinks about the people at Winterfell. Um, she goes out into Bravos, and we have a lovely little bit of chat about the places and the layout there. She goes to a tavern and there's a cat there that recognises her because she's seen it before, but she was somebody else at that time. And she's like, oh, cat, I can't fool you. The cat follows her home and hides up in the rafters. So when she's next to being questioned and battered by the, the kindly man, she she beats him and she doesn't tell him why, but it's the cat's sight that she has used to see where the kindly man is 
in her efforts to beat him with the stick. But thankfully, at the end of the chapter, she's given another potion and she wakes up able to see. I was relieved because I'm one of those people, when I read it, I was like, oh my god, is she going to be blind forever? What did they do? Um, But yeah, no, it's part of her training. Seemed like a punishment at first. Maybe it was for killing Darian. Um, But hey, training. At number two, A Clash of Kings, Aria 4. This is definitely one of my favourite chapters. So Arya is on the road with Yorin, who is bound for the wall, and they hold up in in a small hold fast overnight, and Sir Armory Lorch and his men come in burning the village. You know, calling out for Thoris Beric. They're looking for Beric. They really are looking for Beric. And Yorin shouts over the wall like We're men of we're bound for the wall. We are bound to the wall. No kings, we're not a part of any war that's going on, and we don't have Lord Beric in here. But Sir Armory doesn't believe him and commands his men to storm the castle and kill them all. It's intense. Arya and Hot Pie are up there trying to, like, jab at hands coming over the wall, and fire is spreading throughout the place. They've got the crying girl there that they've found along their way, and... So eventually, they need to get out through this exit tunnel. Gendria is, like, given the tr- the crying girl to get out through the tunnel, and Hot Pie's gone out. Arya is the last one to go through the tunnel, but she turns around and goes back to the barn. She knows that Jack and Agar, Roger and Biter, that the men who are caged are in that barn, she goes back into this barn, it is intense, the animals, the poor animals, but she manages to reach an axe and throw it towards the cage that the men are trapped in. And then she manages to get to the tunnel and escape through the tunnel, and it really reminds me of this bit in Under the Dome, right at the end, where there's a big fire and the boy is make- trying to make his way, worm his way through a big mound of potatoes and he's dragging this little oxygen tank behind him and the feel of it is very much like Arya in the tunnel. She got dirt in her mouth but she didn't care. The taste was fine. The taste was mud and water and worms and life. Under the earth, the air was cool and dark. Above was nothing but blood and roaring red and choking smoke and the screams of dying horses. She moved her belt around so Needle would not be in her way, and began to crawl. A dozen feet down the tunnel, she heard the sound, like the roar of some monstrous beast, and a cloud of hot smoke and black dust came billowing up behind her, smelling of hell. This just screams under the dome to me. So, yeah. Number two. At number one, a Feast of Crows, Arian 3. Technically, Cat of the Canals. We see Arya sent to work with Brosco and his daughters, and it's nice because they don't treat her badly like everyone else that she's stayed with. She's also having wolf dreams, and we get so much description of Bravos. And she really gets on with all of the banter there as well. Those were the ones that Cat liked best. Any man who bothered her was apt to see the fig, or hear himself described as an ass's pizzle, or a camel's cunt. Maybe I never saw a camel, she would tell them, but I know a camel's cunt when I smell one. Aria! Oh my god, girl! And, yeah, she learns how to pickpocket as well. And she'd go around with her classic line, Oysters, clams and cockles! She learns a lot about ships and the captains and their stories, which I'm sure is going to come in useful to her down the line. She gets on well with the courtesans of Bravos as well, which is kind of a bit weird for her, a young girl, to be in those places. But thankfully we don't get anything too weird. She spots Darian as well, the singer from The Watch that was sent out with Sam. She's already spoken to Sam. Um, but yeah, she learns that he is marrying a courtesan and slagging the wall off he and not going back. He has no intention of going back. And Arya, she's a daughter of the North. 
she understands the importance of, you know, them swearing their vows to the wall and the penalty for desertion. She kills Darian. Um, but yeah, she goes back to the temple and reports her new findings and is questioned by the kindly man as usual. This time, she did not hesitate. Darian is dead. The black singer who was sleeping at the happy port. He was really a deserter from the night's watch. Someone slit his throat and pushed him into the canal. But they kept his boots. Good boots are hard to find. Just so. She tried to keep her face still. Who could have done this thing, I wonder? Arya of House Stark. She watched his eyes, his mouth the muscles of his jaw. That girl, I thought she had left Bravos. Who are you? No one. You lie, he turned to the way. My throat is dry. Do me a kindness and bring a cup of wine for me, and warm milk for our friend Arya, who has returned to us so unexpectedly. That warm milk is a bad potion and she wakes up blind oh it's a it's a really good chapter i love that chapter i think it's her best chapter so that's aria's top seven chapters according to me anyway what do you think would you put other chapters in the mix would you rank them differently let me know don't forget to like and subscribe i'll see you in the next one have a good day cheerio